Okay, guys. Um, I had to reset the account. Uh, not what I wanted to do, but I'm going to tell you what I did wrong, uh, and I'm not going to waste any time crying about it. Um, I am reversing positions too quickly. Uh, trying to see both sides of the marketplace is a good thing. You should. Um, but um, I didn't see this move coming. I thought, uh, I mean, we moved down almost 10 st st standard deviations. Um, it's a good idea to see a pattern before you actually, you know, start entering. Um, so I'm not going to waste any time crying about it. I know what I did wrong there. Uh, I was reversing too quickly. So it is what it is. Uh, we're moving on. We're on a reset. So profit target is 3600 and that's what we're working with. Yeah, I didn't follow this idea. Uh, I was right about it going down, but I didn't realize the magnitude, which is fine. Um, but I tried to reverse long too quickly, um, which was a mistake. Uh, I should be much more cautious about reversing direction. You got to see both sides of the marketplace, but you can't reverse too quickly. So we're here. We're on a reset, and that's fine. It is what it is. I'm not going to cry about it. We got trading to do. So that being said, you always want to enter in on something something that you're seeing. You don't want to put trades at, at random spots. So we are going to start getting along here. I think that that cathartic push there was was the final push for this. So yeah, you can't you got to see something before you get in. And I I would say, generally speaking, that trying to get in right at liquidity is um, not a good idea. So we're on a reset now. Um, can get funded in three days, 3,600 a day, 3,600 Friday, 3,600, 1,800 Monday. That's kind of best case scenario. So, you know, sitting here crying about uh, having to reset is not um, going to solve the problem. So we're working on a reset now. And we're not going to be reversing directions too quickly. That, that's it. We're just not reversing directions too quickly. Okay, market analysis. We made a mini multiple standard deviation projection push at a time of the day that I would not expect it. However, this is the Thursday before non-farm payrolls. Um, and because it's Thursday before non-farm payrolls, uh, there could be some erratic price action today. Okay, and we're not gonna try and get cute with anything today. Um, it's Thursday before non-farm payroll Friday. 
And so I'm not expecting clean price action today at all. I'm expecting it to be quite nasty, really. So you ever want to know what your economic calendar events are? It's right here. You can see July 7th is non-farm payrolls, unemployment. So we're expecting that the day before that, which is Thursday, that's the 6th, that's today's trading, we're expecting today to be pretty erratic. Uh, we're not expecting to get clean price action at all, which is something that I uh, miss. So we're probably going to see a lot of erratic price action today. It's not going to be clean because it's the Thursday before non-farm payrolls. So um, we're here. We're here, guys. Um, yeah, I blew it. I blew it. Had to reset. I was trying to get long on this um, before there was an entry pattern. Um, I knew the market was drawing lower earlier, but I, I wasn't expecting it to do it at this time of the day. But that being said, this is the Thursday before non-farm payrolls, and that's that's what I missed. Um, you got to follow your economic calendar, and as you can see, Monday is going to be loaded too. Or sorry, that's next Wednesday. Next Wednesday is going to be loaded. Yeah, it's non-farm payroll Friday. One of the things that I think I'm missing here, and I'm going to put it out there to the world, is even you know even when I get the draw on liquidity correct, I'm sometimes missing the magnitude of the move, and then I'm reversing too quickly, okay, and um, not waiting to get an entry pattern, enough of an entry pattern, like a clean a cleaner entry pattern. Okay, so we'll get another entry pattern. Come here. Came down almost to the nine standard deviations there, uh, which is right about where I would expect it to turn or can turn. Uh, first contract long here is going to go on at the eight. This is ICT bearish, or sorry, bullish breaker here in the three minute. So we have a low, a high, a lower low. We're going to get long one. Okay, we're long one.
So now we have 3,000 fake dollars of drawdown with which to work. We're going to aim for the one. One of the things about the ICT uh, breakers is that they should make a definitive push into liquidity before you use them. Okay, so that model, really, you need to see it push deeply into liquidity before you use it. I mean, ideally. Um, so we're in new territory now. There's ICT, uh, fair value up there. Okay. We're following this now. I just can't afford to spend any time crying about it. Um, can't. I gotta get funded. So, mistakes learned, number one through this trading combine. We talked about this. Um, I like dollar cost averaging in. I like pyramiding in one contract at a time. Number two, I've been missing our uh, economic calendar and how that's affecting things. So we know it's non-farm payrolls on Friday, so we expect that prior to that, we're probably gonna get some abnormal. Thursday before non-farm payrolls, we're probably gonna get some erratic price action, which we did. So that was my price analysis mistake. Um, and I'm reversing positions too quickly. So not waiting long enough to see another entry pattern come in. And then with the ICT breakers, you want to see them push into liquidity. And I prefer not to enter in on liquidity. I wasn't price was not expecting price to come down this far at this time of the day and usually it would not but uh, I'm expecting a whole lot of funkiness today that's what I'm expecting All right, we're going to try and hit that profit limit today. 3,600 fake dollars. We're not expecting clean price action today. Thursday before non-farm perils, not expecting it. I miss the value our dealing range. I just did not expect price to go down this much at this time of the day, pre-London. But it did, and it did, and it did because it's a Thursday before non-farm payroll, so things are gonna get funky. Okay, this is ICT breaker. This is ICT uh, fair value gap support. That's what we're seeing right now. We are aiming for the first standard deviation to take off this contract. See if we see anything else in the lower time frames, any reason to add on another. Yeah, that gap has been left open. That's probably breakaway gap right there. Price respected that. All right.
All right. Let's see if it wants to leave this gap that it just made open. Yep. We're not reversing positions too quickly. We're scaling into our positions. We're looking for reasons to enter the market, ICT patterns, and we're looking at our economic calendar to guide us as to what kind of price action we're probably going to have today. We know today's probably going to be erratic as hell before Friday's non-farm payrolls, and then we'll see um, how Friday treats us. Friday, non-farm payrolls, I would expect it to be a lot cleaner price action after, so, you know, two-step macro for non-farm payrolls, and then after non-farm payrolls, we're expecting cleaner price action. But the day before NFP, we're expecting tomfoolery. That's why the price was not following what I wanted it to do or my ex expectations for the time of the day, and we had a huge move lower. Uh, right into New York midnight, which is not typical. I'll just tell you it's not. So the overnight session tonight might be quite erratic.
get up to our 30 minute chart. Let's hide the drawings. Price came down into this uh, BISI, re delivered it. We fully re delivered, okay, this large BISI. We just fell right through it. So, that being said, we're probably going to come in and paint roll through the hours all the way back up. We're probably going nowhere today, in my opinion. We're probably going nowhere overall. We're probably going to paint roll this whole thing back up. But maybe not in the overnight session. But maybe. I'm expecting funkiness today. Funkiness. We'll see that blue box remain open. Uh, profit targets, looking at that ICT bullish breaker. Um, first profit target there is the uh, one standard deviation. Second profit target is advanced gap theory, one standard deviation movement. And those also would be above uh, New York open 12 a.m. You don't want to move the stop to break even too early. My stop is very intentional there. Because if that blue box gets re-delivered, uh, the trade idea is no good.
Yeah. Very, very odd time of the day for it to do uh, an 87-point move. That's because it's a Thursday before non-farm payrolls, and that's the key. So... Next Wednesday, I get something. Got PPI. The 13th. I don't believe in the news. I don't want you all to think that I believe in the news. I don't. Uh, but it affects the way that the algorithms are working. And they might do unexpected things like move down 80 points um, pre-London. That's pretty crazy. That's not what I would expect to happen. And I don't think it would usually happen if it were non-farm payrolls. Um, if it were not non-farm payrolls on Friday, I don't think the price would have moved down 80 points pre-London. That's not typical. So, I'm going to uh, take a quick camera break here. Um, chart will be running.
you know, my advice from what I have seen, in my opinion, I, I'm not telling you to buy a security or sell it. Um, it is my experience that my worst trades are when I'm not seeing enough. Okay, I try to enter in on something that's not really there. There's a very fine line between seeing something there and not seeing it there. And trying to get cute. Okay, don't get cute. You need to actually see something. Like, you need to be fairly confident that you are seeing something before you enter. It, you know? And that's my worst trades. Is entering, reversing too quickly, number one, and then entering when I'm not really seeing something. Everything is balanced, guys. You can't just, you know, you can't wait forever. You have to execute the trade if you're actually going to make money. But you need to wait to execute the trade until you really think that you're seeing something. And that's the mistakes. That is the mistake that I made tonight. And um, also not looking at the economic calendar and realizing that normal market conditions are not in effect. Um, we moved down 84 points before the London Stock Exchange or before Frankfurt opened. Guys, it doesn't usually do that. I was telling you, like, it doesn't usually do that. But open up your economic calendar on trading view on the right and you'll see non-farm payrolls and we're the day before that so there's going to be some erratic price action Thursday I think oh well I already know because I saw it so we'll see about the day session All right, I'm going to be here um, without the camera on uh, for the remainder. Of, probably, I don't know if I'll turn it back on. Maybe.
I guess we're on the dollar index, uh, which has been pushing our our indices down. Um, dollar index just made an ICT bearish breaker. We got this high, low, higher high that pushed into liquidity. First standard deviation of that comes in at 103 spot 225. Got a SIBI here that is currently open. So we could see a shot lower here on the dollar index and therefore could be looking at a um, a shot higher here on the NASDAQ. So what the algorithms in my speculation are doing right now, okay, is they're rapidly repricing. They're, they're going to rapidly reprice all over the place ahead of ahead of non-farm payrolls because they're trying to get in line for non-farm payrolls. So I think Thursday's trading, we're going to see just a lot of craziness, just a lot of shooting, you know, shot up, shot down, but ultimately go, go a whole lot of nowhere. And then my current thinking for non-farm pay payrolls on Friday, big down day, like big, big black day, hundreds of points. That's what I'm thinking for Friday. But Thursday, a whole lot of nonsense. That's what I'm thinking. It's a whole lot of nonsense, erratic price behavior on Thursday. So very like periods of when it's very slow and then it's going to rapidly reprice. Kind of like how gold trades. That's what I'm expecting on Thursday. And then non-farm payrolls, we, after it comes out, we're probably going to get clean movement, which is what we like, but we have to work with both. So, guys, advanced gap theory takes us one standard deviation higher, just above New York, open 12 a.m. So we have uh, a breakaway gap here, and then we have a, a measuring gap here, one standard deviation. We've also got ICT breaker. So that's why I'm sitting long right now. And we're going to be applying a... Uh, trailing stop here for both contracts. We're going to lock in some profit. Got to, you know, this is what I'm missing sometimes is not factoring in the economic calendar. How we expect the price to behave according to the economic calendar. Not a, not that I believe in the news, guys. It's just injections of volatility. So, uh, I got to reach a profit target today, guys. I got to get it done. So, it's going to be probably a long day. It's probably going to be... I might just say screw it and, like, record the whole damn session that I'm trading before I go to sleep and then put up, like, a four-hour long recording. We'll see. Yeah, I'd like to see that gap stay open, too, um, here on the five-minute. Okay. Stop. Trailing stop's going to be there because it could come into this busy and then go higher. Otherwise, we're going to lock in a four-point profit. We're just going to lock it in. We're going to lock in some profit here. We can get this account reset started off good. Trying to make 3,600 fake dollars. Guys, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you've never used ICT concepts, <clears throat> it doesn't usually shoot down 80 points before the Frankfurt Stock Exchange opens. That is not typical NASDAQ behavior. Okay? It's not, but we have non-farm payrolls on Thursday, and uh, so we, that's what we saw.
Yeah, I'm not moving the trailing stop. Um, we're going to just lock in that profit. We'd rather see the limits get hit, but uh, whatever. I want to lock in some profit, so I will. All right, looks like it's going to be stop. No? Make down to our busy here. It's probably going to be stop out here. 200 profit minus commissions. So get off to a small win. And then we're going to wait for another trade idea. Be stopped out. No, not quite. All right. No, I'm still not stopped out. All right, we closed out that bissy. We're still not stopped out. I'm not moving it. It's teasing me. stopped out. No. We're stopped out. And that takes us up 175.84. We're getting the count off to a uh, positive, which is good. Okay, we're going to keep following this trade idea for a little bit longer, though. Assuming that that's not going to be a measure gap, it's going to be a common gap. So we're going to keep following this idea for a little bit. The contract's going to come on there. Get rid of that standard deviation. So if this is a common gap instead of a measuring gap, which should not be re-delivered, uh, then it could act as a good support here. That's what we're looking at right now. 
I'll be back.
All right, I'm back. I'm in the dark. Sorry. Um, yeah, darkness. All right, let's take a look at our bigger picture here. Okay, um, I'm here. 30 minute chart. Coming back down to uh, reclaim, same Bissy here. Kind of sitting in the midpoint of that. Uh, I will add on the third contract if I see what I want to see. One hour. Yeah, taking out London low seems unlikely, possible. Well, actually, third contract's not going to come on there. It's going to come on down there. Because I think we're going to, we're pushing even lower. So, let me see here, because this is doing a low, high, low thing. So we could end up making ICT bullish breaker here. And low, high, lower low could come down into liquidity here. Yeah, we'll leave the buy limit there. That will be contract three.
All right, I'm exercising patience here. I'm not going to throw on the third contract, even if it does turn around here. I'm uh, going to wait. I'm going to wait to see what we see. Yeah, this is going to be a long recording. Okay. High, low. Third contract's not coming on until I see something good. So one minute chart. I want to see an inefficiency created that is left open. Patience, discipline, waiting, we're waiting, I'm going to add on that third contract yet, waiting, waiting for the market to move, it's not moving right now, waiting, we are waiting right now, waiting, We're waiting. Trading is waiting. Waiting to see what it wants to do before I add on third contract. So we're waiting. Wish you give up. Waiting.
Okay, we're waiting. So I think another thing that I'm going to do to optimize my trading is use the full screen chart. I'll go for longer recordings. Um, gonna be long upload times, but uh, basically I, I just don't wanna stop and start and um, I wanna keep an eye on the chart. So from this point forward, um, I'm gonna, when I trade, I'm gonna try and use the full screen chart um, like this and then have the drawing tools at the top. Um, except for I need to keep an eye on the economic calendar, but I shouldn't need to reference the economic calendar very often. Um, I can use the number pad to change the time frame like that, so that is uh, good. So we'll do that. That could be a breakaway gap there, right there. Let's we'll see if price leaves that open, in which case we're going to add on contract three. Two contracts will come off at the one, and we'll see if we can also get the two for one. So, all right. trying to optimize here so every little thing matters all right contract three is coming on I cannot put contract three on with the buy limits okay how about contract three now okay um, two are gonna come off at the one One is going to come off at the, the two. The two seems, you know, the way things are trading tonight, possible we make it all the way to the two. Um, stop. Right. We need to put a stop in the market. So where where would I not want to see price trade back to? I want to see leave pink box open. So the stop is going to come in there. And that's it. We're going to let this trade play out. Then I might go take a shower. Let's see if we can get this trade here. That would be a decent side trade. Let's go up to the five minute chart. Okay. We're on the full screen chart, as I think I can optimize with the full screen chart more than I can with, you know, to maximize the screen real, real estate. Don't want to disrespect the chart.
The one seems pretty likely. I feel pretty good about the one. Feeling pretty good about the one. The one is feeling pretty good. Another thing that I want to implement going forward So very uh, feeling pretty feeling pretty confident there about the one. The two is feeling pretty good. Could even blow past the two to be honest with you. But um, I can only play with three contracts right now, so that's what I'm playing with. Um, at this point, the break even stop is coming in. The market um, three ticks above my entry. So uh, we're playing with the house money now. Um, I'll do one full tick above. Okay, stop is in the uh, one full point. So stop is in the marketplace. Welcome to the London session. We're in for the next three hours. If this trade works out, I'm going to go take a shower, uh, relax for a minute. Uh, I'll finish this recording and we'll come back for London Cash Open. London Cash Open is in one hour. Uh, I had to reset this account, unfortunately. But uh, this is top step, step two, simulated trading. I have a two times payout bonus on this account if I get up to express funded. So I'm sticking with this account. Okay. What were my mistakes earlier? Why did I have to reset this account? Wasn't I was not expecting price to move 84 points down in a single move prior to the Frankfurt Stock Exchange opening the London session, which is what we're in now. And it does not usually do that. However, we have non-farm payrolls on Friday tomorrow. So we're kind of expecting price to be pretty erratic. And that's what I missed. Okay, the one is feeling good.
Okay. That's profit. And the break even stop on the last one. Gonna trail it up to right there, and let's see if we can get the two. Two is feeling it is uh, feeling good as well. Not the two. Okay, two is feeling good. Feeling good about the two. It's reacting off New York Open Midnight. It'll be the one and a half. I'm already off two contracts. At which point we I'm gonna take a break. Okay, the two is the two is feeling good. Uh, at this point I I'm just moving the stop up there. I wanna go ahead and lock in most of this profit. Just gonna lock in the profit just in case it wants to tomfoolery me. There, it punched through the two. Okay, we're out. We're out. We're flat. Um, okay, uh, we are okay. We've got twenty four hundred eighty two dollars and nine cents to go. 90 cents to reach our profit limit for the day profit target um, I am going to stop the recording there I'm gonna go take a shower um, I'm gonna take a break decompress I think the price is gonna um, I don't know I don't know right now I'm gonna reassess so we just punch through the two we punch through the one we punch through the two could call come all the way up to the three and maybe the four. Um, yeah, price is going to be erratic tonight. Um, it's going to do a lot of erratic movements, probably while traveling in the end, nowhere. But it's going to do that uh, unchanged thing very erratically. So that's what we're dealing with tonight. All right. Bye.